Hi guys, Dave here. Uh, so today I'm going to be making my second video a little bit more in depth and we're going to be talking about uh, some of the components that I've installed onto, uh, onto my Phantom 2. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions guys. The first assumption is that you know how to take off the top cover. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, there's lots of videos that, that spend a lot of time showing you how to do that. So uh, if you can't get that top cover off, I would suggest watch one of those videos. The second uh, assumption that I'm going to make is that you've already installed the Zenmuse 3D gimbal. Uh, that came probably with your package if you ordered the system that included that. And so that was in the box and uh, there was pretty good instructions on that. There's really not much to it. Uh, there's four mounting screws holding it onto the bottom. Uh, there's a ribbon cable that's stuck on the bottom and you just plug it into the back. And then you put on that little uh, micro USB cable onto that connector which plugs into the GoPro 3 camera. And that was pretty straightforward and that's all already internally mounted into everything. So I'm not going to really go into any of that. None of that stuff uh, has anything to do with the components that we're installing today. Uh, they operate through that gimbal, but we have to do no, nothing with that type of wiring, and so we're not going to really worry about that. What I am going to be talking about is how I installed the iOSD Mini, the Data Link, and the Imerson 600 milliwatt transmitter under the module. Okay, so let's get into it, guys. So as far as the install goes, guys, there's going to be six wires that you're going to have to cut and solder together. These two wires here, the red and black, are the power leads that are coming off of the, uh, the Imerson transmitter. Then you have yellow and black, and that's the video signal in to the Imerson transmitter. Uh, and then you also have these two over here, and that's the, the video signals coming from the ISOD Mini. So I've made a little, uh, I've got a little drawing I'm going to put up on the screen now, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about as far as these wires go. So this is the wiring diagram I put together here. Now these here are those six wires that we just saw in the video that we've had soldered together. Uh, those wires will control everything. Uh, you're basically coming off of this transmitter uh, with a video signal. That's what those yellow and black wires are for. They go to the brown and orange on the ISOD Mini. Uh, and that ISOD Mini then is uh, connected to the uh, main controller. This is the top view of, that, uh, of the uh, Phantom. You're seeing it from the inside, and right where I've got that red circle, that little connector, that's the one we pulled up uh, through the leg, it was a notch attached down to the leg originally, we pulled that up inside, and it's wired over into the ISOD Mini. That ISOD Mini then is plugging into this CAN bus cable. Again, that was another piece that we pulled off of the leg, and we pulled it up inside so it could all be inside the unit. Uh, the CAN bus has that extra port right here, and we plug that into the data link. Uh, and that's how the data link gets all its uh, power and information and, uh, you know, and communicates basically with the main, main controller board here. That's pretty much all there is to this, guys. It's a pretty simple operation. Okay, guys, so let's talk about how, uh, how these components all really fit inside of the, uh, inside of the unit here. Uh, as you can see, you have the, uh, the IOSD over here, uh, cable plugging in here and the, and the cam cable plugging in over here. Uh, so you've got the little CAN bus cable here. Now, now this this cable needs to be disconnected from the leg that it's currently mounted on and then brought back up here into the machine. Uh, when you do that, make sure uh, you put some, uh, some insulating tape around it. There are, there are electronic metal parts in there that, uh, that could uh, you know, short out against something. So when you pull it out, that's really the only modification you have to do to this is to install that. So your ISOD Mini is plugging into this cable. Uh, and, and really, if, and for the most part, you can see there, there's space underneath here. These are all plastic parts, so none of that's going to short out. And, uh, you know, I just kind of found a location in there where I could tuck this down inside. So, so that's going to be down inside of there. And then if you just follow the unit around, uh, over here, I took the ISOD, and now the cable side with the mini cables on it, that's going to go down inside. And this is sliding down basically behind the battery compartment. So the battery, when you plug it in, is, is, is really uh, right directly behind this module. But it fits in there nicely. Uh, and, and so you're going to put it in here, and now you see the, how the excess cable is. I've just kind of routed that around inside. You don't want to crimp any of these cables, uh, any long, any, any really, you know, 90 degree crimps or anything like that. So make your cables kind of flow around. And there's plenty of room in here. As you can see, I just kind of tuck that down inside here. Uh, the data link basically is just sitting to the side is sitting on here because there's a big open spot right here 
Uh, again, there are electrical connections here, but they have been insulated slightly. This is a plastic case, so nothing's going to short out on there. In addition to that, I put two little foam pads, which uh, help hold it up off of there. Uh, two little foam pads I put on the top as well, and that just helps protect the uh, the top cover where the where the uh, the GPS satellite uh, antenna is, and it just helps kind of protect it from that. So really, that is just going to set in there. It's just setting in there. Uh, I don't I don't secure it down because really when I put the lid on uh, it's applying enough pressure with the foam pads in there that the module doesn't move around so the only other thing you need to do then guys is uh, the two antenna leads coming off of the module are right here and here and they need to be at a 90 degree angle from each other so I brought one over here to this to this leg and I've run the wire over here and where the little vent ports are on the side you can see the vent port over here I, I just ran the wire out through one of the vent ports the second wire, to make my 90 degree, I brought it over to this side, the other leg, and the same thing. I've just routed it through the, through the inside of the machine and I brought it out on the other side, over here. And so that's how that module sits and it just stays right there. Uh, the only other thing that is left to do is to take all these wires uh, and kind of bundle them up. Uh, I like to tie wrap them. I've got some little mini tie wraps. So just kind of bundle them up so that they're not hanging all over the place. Again, be careful with everything. You don't want to. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to crimp any wires. Uh, these aren't quite as fragile. Uh, uh, that's that's basically all we need to do with that. Uh, you, you know, the, again, these are just going to sit on, kind of sit on top here once they've been tie wrapped. Um, there is nothing here there, in that space, and there's nothing to bounce around. So, so these modules are sitting I've inside. I've set there. up. I've done it. I've flown it. Everything works fine, uh, and, and so there's no issue that I can see with installing these components inside. Uh, inside of the shell, uh, and I, I believe I've seen some videos that say you're not supposed to do that, uh, but I have had no no negative effects by doing that. Uh, the, the the plane, the, the the machine flies perfectly well uh, with all of that in there, and so uh, at this point in time, I'm going to leave it in mine. Uh, you guys make your own decision as far as that goes, but uh, that's that's the way I'm going to do mine, and I don't really see a big issue with it. So the only so the other thing that we've done then after all that wiring, you've done your soldering. Your wires have all been connected up. Uh, you would have ran a transmitter cable off of this. So off of the so off the Amerson transmitter, you basically have two connectors. So off the Amerson transmitter. So then off this Amerson transmitter, you basically have got two connectors. You've got your power line. You've got your power, and you've got your video. Uh, video in. So you've got power on this side and video in. Power is, is a red and a black cable. The, the video in is a black and a yellow cable. Black for video ground and yellow is the video signal itself. Those, those cables come out of here uh, and as you can see again I've just taken a piece of white shrink tubing and inserted all four of those cables into that and just again to give it more of a clean appearance uh, ran a couple of inches of it up inside and it comes up into here and so that just keeps the cables together and again uh, it gives a, a cleaner appearance to this, to this, uh, to the outside of, of the unit. When you get this cable, uh, this first cable here had a total of uh, five wires on it, but we only needed two. So uh, you can remove those wires. There's a little, a little tab on in the front of these these uh, connectors that you push in, and it will re release that wire. And so we took out all of the wires that we didn't need, only leaving us the yellow and the black here uh, for my video signal. So it eliminates a, while, a lot of wiring there, and that just brings a nice, uh, a, a short number of cables to come into it. And then uh, again, well, you know, I, I put a piece of sh heat shrink over top of this. This unit is already sealed with a plastic wrap, but it was clear, uh, and so I just put a piece of heat shrink over top of it. I didn't seal it or anything, and I make sure on both ends that I left it open so that there is airflow that can circulate uh, uh, through here and to help cool, help cool the transmitter, keep the transmitter cool. So that's basically what we've done there. So we're going to put this all back together uh, and then we're going to be ready to fly. So <clears throat> let's talk about some of the pros and cons of, uh, of, of putting those components inside there. There is uh, there are some people who say that you should not be installing any of that uh, type of electronic components inside because it's going to interfere or possibly might interfere with uh, the operations, uh, the flight control capabilities of the Phantom. Uh, I, I don't know for sure. There's a lot of guys who do put that inside. Uh, I've seen some guys go so far as to actually take the casings off of those ISOD minis 
take the casings off of those so that it makes the unit smaller so they can put it in there. I, I, I didn't really have that much trouble putting the stuff in there. The two components really they're inside there and so that I wasn't going to worry about anything like that. Uh, the downside of installing those components inside is that occasionally there are going to be firmware updates that are going to need to be performed. And to do that now you're going to have to take the cover back off uh, to access the connectors that, that, that plug into it when you plug onto your computer and do firmware updates. That's the downside of it. Uh, for me, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's, worth, uh, it's worth that. Uh, you, have, you know, the nice part about installing this stuff inside, if, you know, if you're familiar with all with, with aircraft, there's what they call the center of gravity on an aircraft. Uh, and it should be somewhat balanced around in the center of the plane, and that's where your center of gravity is. Is what keeps the aircraft uh, in its best flying position. Uh, and, and so it's these, the, you know, quadcopters, the way they work, they don't have rudders, they don't have elevators, uh, they don't, they, the way they control how they go up and down and back and forth and left and right and pitch and yaw, that's all dictated by the speed of the motors. Uh, and it's all, it's all computerized and the, and the machine knows when you, when you give your stick a, a forward push uh, that it increases power to, to the front motors and that makes the frame draw it forward more. That's how all of these work. If your center of gravity is off, uh, then the machine will compensate for that and, and it will make one of the motors uh, run harder or stronger than the other so that it's compensating for, for the weight being misbalanced. And so when it does that, you're losing battery time. Uh, when it has to work harder with one of those, one of those motors has to work harder, it's taking more, drawing more current, and so that's running your battery time. So you want to you wanna keep everything as best you can directly underneath the module or right in the center of the module. Uh, of, and right in the center of the unit, uh, and that gives you the best center of gravity. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully I, you found this video helpful. Uh, this, this setup that I did, I, I've not seen all of those components installed on a video, and that's kind of why I made this one, because I want to do, that's what I had to do to install these things into mine. So guys, you know, we installed the, the data link inside there, and that, that's used to communicate with the ground station. Uh, now that ground station, you know, it's comprised of uh, this little uh, data link module that's on the ground with a Bluetooth capability. Uh, this Bluetooth module here is what's sending a Bluetooth signal over to the iPad and then we're controlling autonomously and programming flight information uh, to the Phantom through that. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we need to find, I need to have some type of a, a stable table, a stable platform that I can set my iPad on and then I can raise this module this, this, and so that I can raise the data link up off the ground a ways. Uh, and I've got something in mind for that. Uh, that's going to be what my next video is going to be about. Uh, we're going to be building a mobile uh, ground station flight box. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back and see the next video. It's going to be really exciting. And I will sign off.